Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to No Filter with Naomi. This is a very special edition as I have looked all over the world to find my daughter. Yes, my daughter. And she is in Adelaide, Australia. So, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome my daughter, Adut Tech. Oh my goodness, you have not been easy to keep up with my darling daughter. I mean, it's been a tough couple of months, but... Tell me, tell me, tell me what you've been doing, tell me how is everything with the family? Well, prior to the whole coronavirus outbreak and social distancing thing, I was just in a plane every single day going to different places um then i finished fashion week and i came home to see the family and, and you finished did you say you finished fashion week did you do milan fashion week and paris I, I did new york milan and paris yes so i was done by the end of it i was like i need to go home i need to go see my now explain family. to the viewers when you do new york milan mm -hmm. and paris how many mm -hmm. shows do you do in each country, Adut? Um, well, my season in New York, the season was my, was definitely smaller than my last season. So I did so six shows in New York. That's your age scaled it shows. down for you to mm -hmm. make it less, yeah. yeah. Okay, but so it could be more. It could be more, because last season right. I had 13 shows in just in New York alone. And so this season I had less than that and Milan it's always roughly the same number the same like 10 11 12 shows and that's the same thing with Paris like 11 12 13 shows so it can now, easily go so the you. viewers the viewers understand mm -hmm. those 10 11 12 shows are shows that your agent has exclusively decided to mm -hmm. choose for you but mm -hmm. it could be way more it could be. Well, it could it be could. way more. It's always but cut down. This is cut mm -hmm. down for you. And yeah. I totally understand. And, it sh and mm -hmm. so it should be. Mm -hmm. So please go on. So, so I think by the end of this fashion week, I did maybe 28, 29 shows, if I'm not wrong. I wasn't keeping count, but I definitely did less than last season, which was 34 shows. Well, so. I, I think on every, every picture you put on your Instagram, I'm like, proud mama. Proud of you, proud mom. I'm so happy every time. <laughs> I want to go back to the beginning with you because your story is such a surreal and beautiful but unusual story. So you were born in South Sudan, is that right? Correct. You were raised in Kenya. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then walked to Australia at what age? Seven? At, at eight. I think I had just turned eight, maybe. Close to eight. So yeah. you call Australia, where are you in Adelaide now? Mm-hmm. So Adelaide, Australia is now, is your home. That's where you call it's home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so from there, can you walk us through, so your school life, what happened from there? What, what, how did you become in this fashion world? <laughs> well, it goes back to when I was, I mean, growing up, I was always super thin and just tall. It's just naturally, it's a lot of my Sudanese people were naturally like just slim and tall. So I grew up very slim and tall. Even at a young age, I didn't look the age that I was. Um, and maybe around 12, I want to say, my year seven teacher, my grade seven teacher would always tell me like, you should be a model, you should be a model. And this was around the time that I like, got so obsessed with you. And like, I was obsessed with like Victoria's Secret. And it was just, so my <laughs> love for fashion and, and it was just really coming in. And he would always tell me like, you should be a model when you grow up, you should be a model. And I didn't really understand anything about it. I'm like, so how mm -hmm. were you seeing model? How were you seeing fashion magazines? You could have no, you weren't buying them. No, I wasn't buying them because I never 
nothing attracted me to buy them. Like I didn't see a black girl on the cover for me to be like, oh, let me buy this magazine. Or I didn't see any like ads on TV that made me want to buy fashion magazines. So I never really bought them, you know? I didn't start buying fashion magazines until maybe like 14, 15. Yeah. When I really started getting into fashion. But even then it wasn't like, I wouldn't go be like, oh my God, let me buy this magazine that's out now. It's just, it had to like catch my interest. How did you, tell us how did you become a model? How did that happen? How I became a model was, so at 13, uh. I did a, my auntie used to model and I did like this little runway show that she put together and it was showcasing African clothes. Where was and that show? In Adelaide. In Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In Adelaide. And I just thought it was, it would just be something fun to do. You know? So she asked me to be in it and Prior to that, actually, I had told my mom I wanted to model. This was back when I was 12. And my mom was like, you're 12. Or like, you know, my mom didn't understand anything about modeling at all. So she was totally was against it. Was she for her daughter to be in this business? Is it, was or just? For the longest time she was. But in the start, it's just purely she didn't understand it. She was like, you're too young. I need you to focus on school. So it was just case closed, no changing her mind. So when my auntie asked me to be in her show, I was like, you gotta tell mom about it because she's not gonna say yes to me. So she told my mom and my mom didn't think anything of it. So I did the show and I think that from that moment, it wasn't anything crazy. It was like right in the middle of the city in yeah. um, this place called Ronda Mall. It was a very small stage, a few like models from various places. It was just like something fun to do. And I think the minute I walked out, I was just like, this is what I want to do. This is it. That's it. I didn't know anything about modeling. I wasn't like heavily invested like that in the industry. I wasn't, you know. But you have a connection between you and something that you wanted right. to do. Right. Exactly. I just and felt so it. How it's did like, you go about changing your mother's mind or, or convincing her to let you? It took years to do that. <laughs> It yeah, I really years. identify with your story right now. My mother was not <laughs> do it at all. It was, exactly. I had to sneak out the house with her clothes, a jacket and a pair of high heels to go for castings behind her back. <laughs> and so, I, I until I came I to one day, I didn't know what to say. So, <laughs> go on. Uh, so from 13, from that day, I was just like, this is what I want to do. I don't know anything about it. I don't understand anything about it, but I know that I'm obsessed with Naomi Campbell. And I think she's just so amazing. She's so beautiful. And I started just like idolizing you so much. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, I literally, I can't, you know, I'll see if I can find a picture. At the time, my mom, she didn't want, because we were renting the house, so she didn't want the walls being like ruined with pictures on it. But I would always like stick your pictures on my door. I had your picture on my laptop screensaver at school. Like oh, I'm not even exaggerating. I didn't know this. So I was so obsessed. It was crazy. Anybody who knew me back then would tell you. Um, so from there, I just from the age of 13 up to 15, I kind of just did like self-taught myself how to like walk. And I mean, I don't think my walk really changed, but I was just working on those things like posing and, and you know I would now, like up and you do out. know mm-hmm. you do your a do to your walk for a yuck since I okay let's talk about when we met. Do you remember when we met? I remember when we met so, Asta and then yeah. you can finish. We met okay. we were doing um Tim Walker, Alice in Wonderland and we were doing it it was a black alice in wonderland so you had i was what was i the henchman with diddy diddy and i were the henchmen Mm -hmm. Um, rupaul was the queen of hearts um um who else was in it um god what's uh, lupita was in it lupita i forgot what lupita's role was I mean, it was just an incredible cast of Alice in Wonderland. And my baby daughter, Adut, was in it. And I remember 
Papa and I were getting ready, hair and makeup, and a dude walks in. And we both look through up at the mirror, and we're both just like, boom. It just hit us. We're like, did you see what I just saw? Oh my goodness. She <laughs> is incredible. Special star. Knew it right away. <laughs> and then, go on, you tell your part. <laughs> I always remember this day like it was yesterday. Like, I think this is like a day that I will forever remember. Um, I walked in, I saw you guys, and I was like shocked. I was like, I was super shocked. Like I was shocked overall that I was even there. And then they didn't tell me that you were there until I saw you. So you can imagine like how much I would be in shock. I was like, wait, but I was trying to keep it together. I was trying to keep my cool. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to act professional. I'm not going to make a of your exams because I wanted to take you there and then to the South of France. Yes, I, yes, I was because you were still doing your exams. I was still doing my schooling at that time. I think that was my final year of school, actually. Was and PG it was a PG was the casting director on that, right? Yes, PG. Yeah, and I remember Pier saying, Pia Georgia, please help me get her, get her, get her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I saw you, and I was just trying to keep my cool. I was like, I'm going to act professional. I'll talk to her after I, I finish my scene. And I could, while I was shooting my scene, I could see you and Diddy on the side just. And I was oh, yeah. so we nervous. Were just, we were in awe. We were just, both of us in awe, just like. I could just hear you saying, oh my God, she's so beautiful. Who is she? Who is she? Who is this little girl? And I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to pass it out. Like, she needs to stop. So afterwards, I we then spoke. And from that day, it's just been like, our bond has been like, it's been like that. You know? <laughs> I know. I, it was crazy. Oh, my, and then a was, with them. not and only did I meet Naomi Campbell, I got to speak to her, and then we saw each other again. You came backstage to come and congratulate me after I closed the Saint Laurent show, I and did. you were just like, "Where's my baby?" All the girls, of, I mean, who doesn't know you, right? I think anybody who's in fashion right now is has to be obsessed with you, right? So all these girls came up to me. And they were just like, oh my God, did, did, did Naomi Campbell just talk to you? It, they were just like, you but know, freaking out. Do you remember out. who I came backstage with looking for my baby? I remember you came with Lenny. And I have a great picture of you, the Lenny, picture. with the Eiffel Tower behind you. I still have that picture. It's a beautiful picture. I remember that picture. That was the first time I met him in person. and. With, like just fell in love with his music afterwards. Anyway, so from there we exchanged numbers. You gave me your number, and I remember you telling me, if you ever need anything when you come to New York, please don't hesitate to call me, message me. And I mean, I think I went home that night, and I actually just I was like, I think I remember I cried because I just. It was my first Paris Fashion Week. I just left, like, I just finished school, just left my family, and I was moving to New York. So it was so overwhelming for me. And I just, I was like, wow. Like, I feel like I just found my first family member. Like, that's wow. what it was. That moment for I'm me. I'm always here for you. And I remember always you texting me the next day, and you were like, my baby, are you eating? Are you sleeping? And I thought, like, wow. This, this has to be God that, like, you know, for this lady into my life. Like, it's just the little things like that, you know, you, you're checking up to see whether I'm eating and sleeping during fashion week. That's what every, like, model needs from their mom, you know? Because I know what it's like. I've been there mm -hmm. and we all can get so caught up in the whirlwind of it all. And I could see what was going to happen to you. Yeah. And so, you know, we have to remind you to. Nourish yourself I, <laughs> and you know, I mean, you know, you know, you need fuel to I go just on. thrown into this and it's just like, whoa, it was so overwhelming for me. It was my first full Paris Fashion Week because I did an exclusive prior to that for three seasons. So it was just like really scary. And um, but but it was know, just so nice. At 16, you carried yourself with such grace 
and elegance. Thank and you. that's why a lot of people didn't, wouldn't believe you were 16, but your face showed that. But your yeah. posture, until this day, your posture is extremely elegant. And your confidence you. when you walk down the runway. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's really, you're something to watch when you come out. You feel, you feel what you're wearing. You know how happy I get when people tell me I take after you? I'm just like, I'm mother has done her job. <laughs> Thank you, mama. I mean, and I remember when I first went to New York and then- Were we'll... you scared at all? Were you scared? Were you scared when you started traveling the world, when you got to Paris and Milan? Did you feel a fear so or you just felt like, I belong here? What did you feel? I think I was more fearful of the fact that it was my first time like traveling anywhere on my yeah. own, anywhere that was an interstate within Australia, because I was used to traveling on my own then. So you didn't but... have anybody go with you, your sister or no agents, you were on your own? <laughs> I was completely on my own. I remember my mom, the day that I left, my mom just got back from Kenya and we literally just like crossed each other. And I was like, I'm a big girl, I got this. It was so last minute and like trying to find someone to come was just like, I was like, I got this. You know, I like, I feel like I learn faster when I do things on my own. So I was like, I, I got this, you know, if I need somebody, I'll find like somebody there to help me. You, you, but, learn, you learn faster, you make your mistakes, you learn from them, yes. Exactly. And so I went to Paris on my own completely and I mean it was it was a scary thing. It was a really long flight on my own. I've never I've never been to Paris before. I didn't know what to expect. So it was a lot of emotions that were just like one of the me. things I remember when you were in New York at my home or on the kitchen mm -hmm. counter we were both eating. Yeah. And um, you said to me never forgot this you looked me right in the eyes and you said i want to work really hard so that i can buy my mother a house i never forgot that it really touched me in so many ways and again i identify with that mm -hmm. you know and seeing how you are with your family and your sisters, your siblings, your younger brothers and sisters, meeting your elder sister, Winnie. You're the second mm -hmm. child, right? I'm the third, so there's a sister the between three. Mm -hmm. So how many of you total? There's Winnie, seven of us. Seven, Winnie, so you're the third. Winnie, and then there's a, I have a sister called Kimmy, and then me, and then my four younger siblings. So. Uh, which I saw, at Christmas time, you were in charge. Yeah. How did that go? <laughs> you see, I'm still traumatized from then, but you know, it's always great. I, I just, I love, it's a nice distraction for me to be able to come home and just leave the fashion world for a moment and just come home and just, you know, there's nothing like family time for me. Reality check. Yeah. Keeps you in, it, keeps you grounded. It really keeps me grounded and always just, you know, bring me back down to earth when everything is just like crazy. Cause the past two years were crazy two years for my career. So well, much we still, happened. We still forget you're only a baby. You're only, you've accomplished so much and you are only 21. I mean, let's talk Almost about- Almost 21 this year, it's, it's, it's crazy. I let's feel like I'm about older. September. Than How many Vogue covers did you have last September, 2019? I had five Vogue covers last September. Five. Did you hear that, folks? She had five <laughs> Vogue covers. Now, since I have been in this business, and my anniversary was yesterday, 34 years, I've never seen a model of cover on five Vogue covers at one time in the biggest issue of the year, September. So, yes, I still haven't done it, but I'm going to do it. I keep saying it. <laughs> I'm going to write, is whether I have to write or call the Guinness Book of Records because I want that to be registered. It should be registered. It's absolutely beyond groundbreaking a dude to achieve that. And do you know how many young girls, not just young girls of color, young girls around the world that you give hope, inspiration to, to hear your story, that 
it can be they can have dreams too that can come true it's just really makes my heart it, sing. Really it really does. just keeps me keeps me um motivated and it gives me the strength to like want to thrive even more you know what was it like the, getting your first book like what you, did that I gained like? inspiration from you and you know, because of you, I'm able to do what I love to do today. And it's it's amazing that I can give the same hope to, you know, girls from all around the world that they can do it too. You know, yeah, and especially like my little sisters. I always think about my little sisters and I'm like, my little sisters can now buy a magazine and they can see me on the cover and me inside and they can see themselves and they can open the TV and see it out of me. And it's, it's just... What was it like to get your first book cover? What was that like? That was crazy. It, it was insane. My first Vogue cover was Italian Vogue, and that was just, I, I really can't put it in words until this day, like the feeling. I was just like, wow. It's I know that if Franca Sazzani was alive, she, she would have absolutely have loved you. So that was yeah. fitting that Italian Vogue was your first cover. Thank you. And now may I ask how many Vogue covers have you had in your young, five-year, six-year career? I want to say just it, between 2018 and 2019. Like, any, I'm guessing anywhere between 16 to 18. Which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. fantastic. Thank now, I'd like to know, I read some things that you want to be involved in philanthropic, in the philanthropic mm -hmm. sense of, um, I guess there's some charities that you've been thinking about that you also spoke to me about of things that you want to be more involved in. Want to tell us about what that is? Mm -hmm. So currently I am working with UNHCR, which is the refugee agency um, mm -hmm. within the UN and I just, you know, I'm a refugee, proud refugee, will always be proud. And I mean, when they asked me to be a part of this, when they asked me to come on board and support them, I didn't even have to think about it. Because all I've ever wanted to do is help people. And if I can help people that I can relate to, like refugees, I understand them. I know what they go through every single day. I mean, I'll do it in a heartbeat. So it's, you know, I'm just mainly like supporting them with a lot of like spreading awareness and things like that um i'd like to be more involved in the future i would me myself i'd like to start my own charity foundation you organization. do you office. feel do, do you feel that some of the other girls that we know and met or just do you feel that there's a trauma that comes when you come from the refugee trauma. camp, do you feel that there's a trauma of something that like haunts you or? I Definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's trauma from like personal experiences, but then, and it definitely doesn't help when society is looking down on you and belittling you for being a refugee, you know? And I always say this, it's, it's not a choice. Nobody wakes up and says, oh, I'm gonna be a refugee today. It doesn't happen like that. It's just, just the circumstances that a lot of people end up in due to being kicked out of their own country and yes. running away, you know, to find Not safety. So I think it's just, it. when you already feel insecure about something or you, you know, it's something that you hate about yourself and then people keep picking at it and picking at it and picking at it, it takes a toll on you. And, you know, I had to just, like get to a point where I was just like, I'm not gonna it? let anybody make me feel ashamed of being a refugee, you know? Because I had to understand that it, it it wasn't, it has nothing to do with me. It wasn't a choice that I made. It wasn't a choice that my mom made. It was just, because had my family left to go to Kenya to the refugee camp, I wouldn't be here today. So, you know, it's just things that I really had to sit myself down and and, just, and like, tell myself and really understand it and believe it. And once I started doing that, I just stopped 
giving a damn about what anybody had to say, you know? And now look, it's like, everybody is so like, oh, you know, you're so amazing. We're so proud of you and this and that. And, and I always tell people I'm a refugee. I'm like, if you're gonna talk about me, if you're gonna claim me, then know my full story. Know where I come from, what I've been through, and Absolutely. then acknowledge where, I, where I'm at, you know? I just don't think, don't say anything about me if you're not gonna tell my story. And I've been more inspired. At first, I didn't talk so much about my story because I felt like nobody would listen or nobody would care, nobody would understand. Oh, no, that's the complete opposite. It's very inspiring for you to talk about your story because you help so many. You must continue. And once I, thank you. Once I did that and I saw the impact that I had, it, it just inspires me to talk about it more and more every single day. I'm just like, this is, I'm proud of it and I'm going to show the world that it's something I'm Always proud of. Always be proud. If, you know, Always I'm be. like, if you like me, you're going to have to like me from me coming up, you know, basically homeless, wearing no shoes, to walking, you know, like Valentino. And tell me this. Like and tell me this. Now mm -hmm. we're gonna jump because we're jumping because your career is it's just okay. <laughs> it's so catch up. You um, need to catch up. It's been so long. How about seeing you in duty free? Do you know what that is to see a black woman in duty free for a perfume ad? I don't mm -hmm. think I've seen it before. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about makeup and with a, in a group of girls. I'm talking mm -hmm. about as a one woman. Mm -hmm. Mama, you, I mean, my I mean, first trip to Paris. Let's talk my about that. Paris, I would, I remember just walking through um, duty free and I would always see like these perfume ads, um, like on TV, they would just come when you're watching TV. And I remember walking through there and I was just mm. thinking to myself, could that ever be me? Will that ever be me one day? And of course I was like, I would love that to be me one day. And look, two, two years later, I go. can walk through duty free and I see my perfume billboard. I see on TV, it comes up on YouTube, it comes up on Instagram. And it just, every time and I, I see it, it reminds me with of, you. What's, is that, um, Bella's brother? Yes, that's Anwar I did. And yeah. I love the I love the love story between the two of you. It's beautiful. I love the whole mix, diversity, mix and cultural. I mean it's I mean we beautiful. Our, our friend young, love, young love. Young love. We love mm -hmm. yes. Mm hmm And I mean it just it makes me so proud every single time I see it. It just reminds me that my hard work and sacrifices that I had to make. For for example, the, one of the biggest sacrifices I made was leaving Australia, leaving my family. Like, if anybody knows me, I'm all about family. Me and my mom were best friends, so it's just, it was so hard for me. And I struggled with it for so long, and I still struggle with it. Like, I get really badly homesick, and then that sets me into like depression and things like that. So it's a constant battle every time, but that's a sacrifice I had to make. And every time I see things like my perfume ad, it just reminds me that it was worth it, you know? So well, it it, you must, everywhere you look must remind you that it was worth it because we cannot go anywhere without seeing your face. <laughs> Tell it, me this. It, it like, shocks me your every time. Relationship, wow. Your beautiful relationship. I mean, you have many, you have a lot of relationships. You had a great relationship with Karl Lagerfeld. Mm -hmm. And you have a wonderful and beautiful relationship with Pia Paolo. Would you like to tell us about that? Pia Paolo. And Maison Valentino. Yes. Pia Paolo is, I mean, I feel like you and Pia Paolo and so many other people that I've met just by being in this career, being in this industry, I feel like God, you guys were sent to me by God. I feel like you guys were meant to be in my life. And I just love and adore that man so much. He's just from the just like you, from the first day he saw me, he's been one of my biggest supporters and has been by my side. And we've just been through one hell of a journey together, you know? 
Like every memory with him is he's wonderful. I I just mm -hmm. absolutely adore him. He's wonderful. He's, he's real. I never thought could ever possibly happen happen for me. You know, like my first fragrance campaign, and it's just such. I mean, I don't think anybody would really understand what. Isn't that it wonderful is. how he? Isn't it wonderful how he just makes us women? I mean, being in that show with you in last January, 2019, it really, I tried to describe the feeling because Pia Paolo was on last Friday and I tried mm -hmm. to describe the feeling. It's really very difficult to describe. It was just it so emotional. I, I just burst into tears. I and know, it's just, you know, especially for us. How was that show for you? How was that, that show? was just, I I struggled to explain in words what it, what it was to me, but it was just like I've never seen anything like it, you know? Just to walk alongside not only girls that just are dark skinned, but girls that come from my country. Yeah. And not yeah. one, not two, but yeah. multiple. And just, it was, and it was just, such, just the, 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 the rainbow of you know, and that in that very moment, I felt like we were the most beautiful women in the world, you know, and uh, I mean, thank you to Pia Paula for just, you know, embracing us and being so proud Absolutely. of us. Just, I mean, that man That's is how so I special. Felt. And I, I had no idea when I, I just trusted him and said yes. And when I got to my fitting and he explained the show to me, I was just mm -hmm. like, I'm in the right place. I mean, I'm in the right place. And I, absolutely. Just, and I think for a lot of us, it was just, we're just like, you know, the, the woman that paved the way for a lot of us is here to celebrate this moment with us. And that's you. So it was just oh, such a- bless you. That's, you I know, just, was the whole thing to be with all of you. Mama, you don't even understand. I was like, well, did I really just, open and my mama just closed and it, the most beautiful show that i've ever been a part of like that was crazy but it's a special nice. one and he's very it was an honor to be with you tell me yes. this you were named one of time magazine list of change makers 2019 mm. also tell yes. me about that <laughs> that that was crazy that totally came out of nowhere it completely swept me off my feet like I didn't I just never saw it you know I always feel like and that's the moment I realized that there's so many other people that are looking at me other than just people in fashion and that was like a proud moment for me you know I was just like this is something that has nothing to do with fashion I was the only model that was listed on that list I was up with people that were presidents and people that were prime ministers and it it was just crazy and just to think that my story got me there just by simply telling but my now, story what does that tell you right now with what's going on in the world mm -hmm. you can make a difference you can help your people and that's mm -hmm. what you should be thinking about how am i gonna help bring aid to mm -hmm. my people because mm -hmm. you can do that adult i know you can you yeah. need to use who you are. Like President Nelson Mandela told me, I'm going to send it to you. You mm -hmm. need to use who you are and who you've become to help others, which I know that's what you want to do. And right mm -hmm. now, with what's going on in the world, is when you're going to be needed. Mm -hmm. So try to think about that. If there's any connections or anyone that I can give to you to get mm -hmm. that ball rolling, you already have the UN which is a great ball to have. Yeah. Take it, embrace it, and try to find out what it is that you can do to help now before it hits the continent. As we know, the continent of Africa is gonna take a big hit. Mm -hmm. We wanna be able to be preventative and to get to that curve before it gets bad. Mm -hmm. So this is where I believe in you, that you, you. can make a change right here. I do. After this call, I'm getting out my journal. I'm getting out my pen, and I'm. I know you. I know you. I know. I know. Listen, 
let's talk about diversity in this business overall. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you're, how do you feel in general in the business? You knew what it was like before, you knew our struggles, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, do you feel that it's fair now? How do you feel about it? It's definitely a hundred percent better than it was. And I wasn't even there at your time, but we saw it. We hear your stories and, you know, we can only imagine how hard it was for people like yourself. And so we're definitely more fortunate to be able to, for things like social media, for example, it gives us a platform to have a voice and really speak our mind and just right. be vocal about it, you know? Um, whereas I know people like yourself didn't have that, so. But tell me something. Uh, have you ever, have you not, is there something or show or something you wanted to do and you were mm -hmm. not chosen because you mm -hmm. felt, uh, yeah. yeah? How yeah. recently was that? Um, I think I remember when I first went to Paris and I would go and see all these um, big brands and you could just, I, there is, I don't even know if I, I mean, stop it. You know, I didn't see Karl Lagerfeld until Milan. And that was maybe almost two years after like going to Paris and doing this. I didn't see him until then. And it's funny and because Carl very much supported. Carl, I, mean, I remember him saying to me, why haven't I had, why haven't I seen this girl at Chanel? I remember him saying that to me in yeah. Milan, Jerry Fendi. And, you know, and there's I so mean, many I'm other. I'm going to say, um, there's a couple shows that I watched where there's like 103 girls in the show. And, and there is four one or two models, black girls. And I was mm -hmm. not thrilled. And mm -hmm. I'd, I'd actually say to myself, if I was not sitting front row right now, I would mm -hmm. remove myself. I would get up and leave because I found that very insulting. It's so insulting. I, yeah. I mean, in this day and age, you know, this was probably last year, right? 2019, you'd think that there's, we can, we can be at a point where there doesn't just have to be one black model and that's enough. If that's mm -hmm. enough, then have one white model, have one Asian model, and that's enough. Mm -hmm. Have a show with, you know, six girls, in total from all around the world, if that works. But if not, then I, mean, I just think- Go ahead. It, you know, I feel like it's definitely improved. There's mm -hmm. a, even when I started it, and I didn't start that long ago, you know, I remember I was like the only like super dark girl when I first walked my first show. Right. And for the seasons, I was the only like, super, you know, dark girl that was there. The other black girls were pretty fair skin. And, you know, and I would always like ask myself, I was like, why am I the only one here? You know? And now- so it, felt like, it felt like the token, which I know I can identify mm -hmm. with you on that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. token of, which happened that, I went through that a lot in my career in the beginning. And I yeah. didn't want to be alone. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it at all. And the contrary of what people nice thought. To but find um, girls that you can talk to, girls that you can relate to, girls that you look like, or not even look like, but I feel like. Tell me, just how does it like feel? Because I know this has happened to you, and I want to hear the story from you. Mm -hmm. There was a magazine last year that put you on the cover or and, and called you the wrong name. How did that feel? Mm -hmm. That situation in particular was really just insulting to me and i said this on my social media and it's still there i'm not going to take it down because a few people disagree with it or whatever the case is that's how i feel and that's how i'm going to feel forever about the situation i felt like that was just a huge disrespect insult not only to me but to my you know to so, my people so basically, what was to a magazine put you on the cover a magazine featured me, caught, you know, it wasn't like they got a picture and they got words from the internet. 
This was, mm -hmm. I was on a call for one hour. I, when it comes you to gave interview, an interview, you gave an interview I gave an, for an hour. I, I wow. gave an hour of my time. And it wasn't even just like a normal little interview, you know, what shows do you like to walk? It was a really personal one. And I was talking about my story and I was talking about, you know, how I'm trying to make an impact and things like that. I spoke about so many personal things that I don't usually just give any journalists because I try to stick to what the interview is. I don't like doing interviews, so I don't do them often. Yes. So I was just trying to keep to basics and just get it over and done with. But this one, I felt a connection with a journalist, you know? She was a refugee too. So it was like, uh, I see. It was like I was talking to a sister, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So personal one. And once the interview went out, they used a picture of another model. Number one, we don't look anything alike. Shocking. Any way, shape, or form. Shocking. We don't look anything alike. But it's like, you you know who you're doing an interview with, right? Surely you wouldn't take, you wouldn't be like, oh, I want to do an interview. she not go and she obviously should have gone and checked her story and made sure her everything was incorrect, you know, last check. Obviously that wasn't done before going to printing. I feel like that's the editor's um, fault. Absolutely. And I, I, spoke, I spoke to the editor myself and I told her that. And, you know, I mean, she apologized. But it, bottom line is it's not... It's not like a first time thing. It's not the first time it's happened to me, but it's also like not the first time it's happened in general. It happens so often. And you know, that's well, why I, I thought it happened it was so to me in not exactly the same, but the, similar. The, we're talking about Australia. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lovely lady called, Ma she's still alive, called Marion Hume. Mm -hmm. And Marion Hume in the 90s decided to put me on the cover of Vogue Australia. Mm -hmm. Well, she was fired. And I got to see Mary, catch up with Marion Hume later, a few years later in Paris. Mm -hmm. And she told me, I said, hello. She was always very, very tall lady, very, very nice, very engaging and very, very smart mm -hmm. and intelligent mm -hmm. to talk with. And she uh -huh. said to me, I want you to know this. I want you to know it. I was mm -hmm. fired because I chose to put you on the cover of Australian Vogue. And I looked at her and I was like in complete shock. Mm -hmm. I was like, no way, she said yes. It's said, so sad. I stand by it, I stand by it and I wouldn't change it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have no regrets. And I just was like- Shout out to Marion Hume. Shout out to Marion Hume, absolutely, God bless her. And yeah. you know, last Question year, if you remember, so I do you remember like what happened last year? Uh, German L? Mm. It was a similar thing. It was an exact, and this is what I was saying. I was like, if I'm going, I mean, I I'm not the first. I stand up for all of my babies. I stand up for all of you. Because exactly. I felt so bad for all of you. It was so misleading. It's, it's, it was it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and it made me so like, I was like, people just don't learn. You know, from my situation, that was really just, I was like, I don't give a damn about what anybody's gonna say a lot of people particularly a lot of australians were saying oh you're just being dramatic and it's it's a simple mistake it's human nature and i was like no 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 you don't understand they don't never know what happened it feels to you. like being you don't asked, know what put, it feels put, put the shoes on and let it happen to <laughs> you then we're talking exactly exactly you know it's just like come on I'm like, it, it, for me personally, you like my thing me. was, I gave an interview and you still put the wrong picture on my interview and you put it out there to post fact checked and do this and do that. So, you know, it was a reality check for the industry and the people who work in it because it's not something that just happened to me in Australia. It happens everywhere. El Germany, for example. Yeah, yeah absolutely. A few and I was just like, so I just have, at that point, I was just like, let's just see where this industry is going to head to because You know, I love whenever you, you. I mean, I love you, <laughs> but what I, one of the things I absolutely love, which reminds me of myself, is that you speak out. Yeah. You speak out. I think, and so you should, rightly so. 
Rightly mm -hmm. so, you speak out. I, I had to, speak to be out. silent. I was you afraid know? to do it in the beginning, but I had mm -hmm. wonderful support team, and I'm spe I spoke out. And yeah. you can, you should, you continue to speak out. You cannot let that be go sliding under the carpet. You're absolutely no. right to speak out about it. No, because for so long we we we've done it, and look, look what happens. It keeps getting thrown back in our faces every time. So I'm just like, I refuse to be silenced in any aspect of my life, in my job, my personal life, whatever, you know, I just feel like my voice is is my God gifted ability that nobody can ever take away from me, you know, and I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it. And you're gonna Whoever use it for it, good. Who doesn't like it, and I always tell people like, if you don't like something that I put on my social media, get off my social media. <laughs> Get up. You know? I saw that. I saw that the other day and I was like, I saw you put that up and I just laughed. I was I mean, like, I love like, this if you know, like something, you're in control of what you see, what you say, what you want to hear. Simply get off my page and don't come and put your opinion. Well, I, I want to ask you, what mm -hmm. will you tell these young girls out there today that look up to you with hopes and dreams? that want to be a model, mm -hmm. that what advice would you give these young girls? Even though you're only 21, mm -hmm. what would you say? I would say, I would say if you have a dream, a passion, whatever it is, and you want to be a model, let's just speak about modeling, for example, you want to be a model, and that's something you're really passionate about, then I say, go for it. Don't let anyone tell you. Don't listen to anything that anybody around you is telling you. Block out the negative. Give it a shot. See if this is what you want to do. See if this, you know, just go for it. Because you'll never really know the end result of something unless you do it. And if you let, you know, negative people and just let the negativity get into your head, then it's going to stop you from doing something that you could have potentially been so in love with, so obsessed with, and so go for it. Always stay true to yourself. I will always stand by this, always stay true to yourself. Always remember where you come from, where you've been, what you've been through, who you are, your roots. And always be I mean, the other thing I just want to say what's wonderful is getting to work with all these amazing photographers of color too. I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to work with Campbell. I mean, I worked with Campbell Addy. I'm going mm -hmm. to work with Tyler. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to work with all of them. And this it's is also so wonderful so seeing that. It makes my heart smile again and again, you know? It, it makes me so proud. Whenever I get to shoot with... I become I get excited when I shoot with many I mean, people. But, you know, I think it's just creativity and the young generation that's coming up from... And these are people of my generation. It makes me so proud. It makes me so proud. It just, it tells me that we've come a really long way, particularly, you know, us black people in fashion. We've really like, we've put up a fight. I know, I was so, I, I had like to say it last thing. year when I did mm -hmm. The Guardian um, and Campbell shot me and I had mm -hmm. to say, I said, this is the first time in mainstream fashion photographer of color has shot me. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable that 33 yeah. years later, wow, you know. It's it's so crazy. my darling daughter, I know, what time is it? What's the time difference for us? I think it's 14 hours. Yeah, it's about 14 hours. It's crazy. I it's, want to say, I want any, any words you want to say to the audience of how to stay safe and what you're doing and just to wrap up and just... Mm -hmm. Leave mm -hmm. us with your Adu Tech legacy and mark right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just say, for me, I've just, I wake up every morning and I know this is a shitty time for everyone. It's not just one person or a group of people. It's a shitty time for everyone. And every morning I wake up and I just remind myself how, number one, how grateful I am to have woken up to see another day. But also just remind myself that I'm not the only one going through this. You know, and I think that that for me just keeps me sane and I'm just like, all right, I have no choice but to remain positive, you know, so I just encourage Absolutely. everybody to try 
and remain positive. I know it's hard for so many people because, I mean, a lot of lives have changed and it's a, it's a strange time and it's, it's a hard adjustment. Are you adjustment. looking forward to the new reset? I'm looking forward. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I'm really just, I'm optimistic and just really looking forward to what the world is going to be like after this. And I really hope that, you know, a lot of us had been taking time to do some self-reflection and just see how you can make life better for yourself and for those around you and for everybody else. And, you know, just, I've been doing a lot of that. You know, I've been like, what can I do differently? You were already what starting to do that in December when you spoke to me. You already yeah. know your self-reflection. Mm -hmm. you, when yeah, you spoke to me in December, mm -hmm. I'm so very to... proud of you, my darling daughter. Thank you, Mama. So it's just everybody very stay much. safe. I Sending so you. much love and light. I miss you more, Mama. I can't wait to okay, see you. And I, I love you. And please say over. hello to your mom, to Winnie, to Kimmy, and to your babies, okay? I will, Mama. And stay I love safe. You so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mama. Bye, baby. Love Mama, you, darling. Bye.